Do you believe in reincarnation? Well, we got a reincarnated sunspot just two days ago. Decaying sunspot AR2806 disappeared. Today, it is back. NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory recorded the sunspot reincarnation on March 7th, which is today. The growing sunspot is 10 times bigger than before, and it is crackling with minor B-class solar flares. Bigger explosions are possible if the sunspot growth continues apace. So yes, the sun is now slowly climbing out of solar minimum in towards solar maximum. I want to remind you again that for seven straight months, solar activity has exceeded in sunspots and solar flares and in solar flux, what even NASA and NOAA had predicted. So it looks like we could be having a much stronger sunspot solar cycle 25 than anyone but me and Scott McIntosh predicted. So that is cool. And remember, yes, the sun drives the weather. So let's get to the weather. Over the next 48 hours, it's mostly calm for everybody except on the West Coast, where you guys will be getting an entire coast of rain, almost. From the Rooter to the Tudor. And then that will move in over the mountains. And so that is interesting. But it starts to get interesting exactly one week from now. Yeah, it looks like things will really pick up around the 14th or 15th, the Ides of March. And so we're definitely watching out for flooding rains and definitely severe weather. And even I am a little astonished at how much the mainstream media has totally dropped the ball on how bad the river flooding in Kentucky is. More flooding along the Ohio River in Kentucky is from today. As floodwaters recede, the assessments will begin of how significant the flood damage really is. And there are parts of Mississippi that are still without clean water after the storm from a month ago, or three weeks ago, that devastated Texas and parts of the South. So, all right, now let's check out the models drawing up what could happen over the next two weeks. Now, it's all subject to change, but we are consistently looking at storm meet weather and we're talking severe weather and flooding possible and it really starts to ramp up around the 14th and then you'll have multiple components of severe weather here it would take the tornado -y stuff down through the south into the carolinas shout out to george thank you asteroid fight club is awesome and amazing um yeah so like it'll be semi-calm Asterisk, you never know, man. The weather can change on a dime. Up until about like the 12th, 13th, 14th, and then you start to see the evil eye up on the map. This would happen in Oklahoma, Kansas area, and then move northeast. But the next storm would say much south if this metal mop, can, metal mop model map continues. And now let's get into the bad news, then good news for Europe. Hey, guys, you guys are going to get a shit ton of rain up until about the 20th. And then a high pressure system will block off the moisture. And so get ready for a consistent flow for about two weeks of moisture. And then it'll hopefully start to dry up for you guys because there's a high pressure system there that would kind of block the majority of moisture. But up until then, you see, watch, here we go. This is, starts on the 9th, and then it's just rain, 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 more rain. Not, it's like nonstop rain, dude, for almost 11 or 12 days. And so I would pay attention to that. But then, like I said, around the 20th, things will start to, Calm down. And I saw people in my comments say that the storms in California were actually stronger than anyone had reported. So we'll keep an eye on these storms that are coming into the West Coast. But as you can see, we've got our storms coming in starting around the 12th. And then we'll move through uh, to the end of the month. And so we really think things are going to pick up definitely in the middle of the month and then stay active through March. And then probably April and May. 
What does it come in? Comes in like a lion, comes out like a lamb. But that is an old saying that probably doesn't apply that much. And I want to point out, during that the floody spot, part of the storm just kind of hangs there for a while. So everybody be on the lookout. You know, this isn't our first rodeo. It's probably not even our second rodeo. Okay? Sound good? Super duper and great. If I mentioned you guys are awesome, and yeah, you guys are super duper and fantastic. Some people think Denver is the best because in the same week you can go from uh, spring weather to deep winter weather within days. But it's all subjective. But yeah, it's going to be temperatures going to be bobbing around like a lava lamp. And atmospheric ingredients will be whipped up in such a manner that will result in a clash of air masses across the plains and upper Midwest by midweek. I'm giving you guys a one day break for me talking about earthquakes and volcanoes because I think you need it. But they're still there. In Florida, you better batten down the hatches. I hope you guys survive. Mike's weather page. Monday morning, AM shocker, Florida, brr. And that's different than the printing thing that goes brr. This is temperature, bro. Temperature's dropping quickly tonight as high pressure blows in the cold. Might be the last one for a while. So enjoy. Remember, do what you can to survive. I don't care if you got to wear a jacket or even mittens. Or a goofy looking hat. But just survive, Floridians. Survive. And thoughts and prayers to the alligators out there. And the iguanas. Oh, hey, I don't know if you guys saw the movie Palm Springs. But it was hilarious and very creative. And it's on Netflix. I recommend it. Industrial engineer Irene Chiores. Wow. Showing us that filament pop. Doing the little dance. Pole dance, I guess. JKP weather, no relation to KJP, um, letting us know there's a strong signal for snow the week of the 15th to the 21st, but, you know, it's still a week out, so we'll, we'll, we'll pay attention. Chris Van Steenbergen, it's the first time I've seen such a fast transition into El Nino conditions, temporary event, question mark, or spring anomalies are kicking in, or could this be a new era of Incredible sea ice retreat, glacier retreat, oceans warming up rapidly, abrupt sea level rise, question mark. We may never know. Or we may find out really soon. Crap, I'm sorry, volcanoes snuck in. Dang it. But yeah, dude, the activity's just been freaking off the charts. Definitely off the charts. And it will probably continue to do so, would be my guess. Oi, Europe, March didn't come in like a lion. But it certainly won't be holding back. I'm sounding like Popeye. Winds are due to ramp up from Wednesday night into Thursday, with the potential for some pretty nasty damaging winds out of the system. So yeah, you guys are definitely getting some wild weather. Yeah, I'm not having to calm down, but then it starts freaking out again. So keep on the lookout for more crazy activity there. This is what's happening under the eruption plume, about 20 kilometers east of the craters, heavy fall of black lapilli and ash from the ongoing paroxysm is visible yeah it's pretty major mount etna eruption um man 2021 it's gonna be filled with surprises yo i mean you don't need glasses to see that it is pretty apparent all right i am your planetary defense commander doing what i can to bring you guys the news and get you prepared for a really wild middle of the month you guys are great i love you thank you for being awesome I'm super grateful for y'all. Stay cool, and I will talk to y'all in the near future. I slept for 13 hours today. This is the first time that happened in months. My sleep schedule is weird. It's kind of like the, it almost feels like the universe puts me on the night shift when it wants me on the night shift. So I will be awake uh, for the crazy periods of things crazily happen at night. But now I got to remember to do a second video at like 5 or 6 in the morning now that my schedule has shifted. Okay? You guys are cool. Stay cool. God bless everyone. Peace out.